Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about access modifiers and specifically protected access modifiers and how they affect instance variables. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com, select menu, then Java OOP Tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the Protected Instance Variable Tutorial. When the Protected Access modifier is applied to an instance variable, the following access is granted. Full access is granted to read or change the value of the instance variable from within the same package. In addition, access is granted to read or change the value of the instance variable from subclasses of another package through inheritance only. It's a little confusing, but you'll understand by the end of this tutorial. Things to think about. Protected access instance variables are generally considered to violate the principle of encapsulation. Use careful consideration before declaring a protected access instance variable. I'm going to come down here and highlight all this code here. Control C to copy, or right click and select copy. I'll move the browser off screen. I have a shortcut to the command prompt set up on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really easy by right clicking, selecting new, shortcut, type in CMD, next, and finish. <clears throat> okay. First thing we do, we're going to type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java Development Kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. Type in CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called Java using the MD command. And I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I'll change directories to the Java folder. And this is what I call my working directory, so I'll create all my packages and classes and everything inside of this folder. I'm going to make a directory called 1, I'm going to change directories to the 1 folder. I'm going to notepad class1.java. Class1.java is going to be the source code file here. Okay, we'll save this. So this is part of package 1, and I'm going to be importing everything from package 2. And I've got two classes in here, tester and class1. Class 1 has a protected instance variable 1 number of int data type initialized to 0. It also has a method display 1 number, which will display this string literal. The value of 1 number equals plus and then 1 number in the instance variable here. Also has this class tester with the main method entry point. First statement in this uh, main method here is basically I'm going to create a class 1 object type CO reference variable and set that equal to a new reference of a new instance of a class 1 object. I'm going to use the CO reference to directly set the instance variable 1 number equal to 111, right? And then I'm going to use the CO reference variable and the dot operator to invoke the display 1 number method and display this to the console. Then I'm going to do some stuff with class 2 here, but let's go ahead and create class 2 before I get around to that. We'll come back to this, compile it, and run it here. CD dot dot, change us back to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here called 2, and I'm going to change directories to the 2 folder, and notepad class 2 dot Java. Okay, bring the web browser back on, to, on screen here, highlight this, control C, control V, save. Package 2, so this is really pretty simple here. I got a class 2 public access. And then I've got my uh, protected instance variable 2 number here of int data type set equal to 0. And then I've also got a display number method, public access type, that will display this string literal. The value of 2 number equals plus 2 number. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. Come back here. So we're just going to go ahead and run this and test the, uh, the package uh, access for protected from within the same package. Right. I'm going to clear the screen. Uh, go down a folder here, type in Java C1 slash class 1.java. Let's go ahead and compile that. And now Java to run the ver Java virtual machine. We want to run from the one package. We want to invoke the dot tester or the tester method. 
Okay, the value of one number equals one, one, one. So fairly simple on that. That's all good there. All right, so what happens if we try to, well, we're going to in the next statement, create a class two object type CT and set that equal to a new instance of class two, right? And that will, that will work just fine because class two is a public class. We'll be able to create an instance of that there, right? So let's go ahead and uh, compile that. Nothing really to run yet. So let's take a look at the next statement here. What if we use that new reference to class two object and we try to set the two number equal to two, two, two directly, right? Now this is protected, so we should come to an error here. Make sure I got that saved. Okay, we get error. Two number has protected access in class two, so we cannot do that. That is just not going to happen. Let's come back here, so there's no point in even trying to execute the next line of code on that. I'm going to uncomment this line of code here, this statement, and now, basically I'm gonna comment this and uncomment that. So now I'm gonna ex, uh, do extends class two. So class two will become the super class of tester. Tester will be its subclass. So we'll inherit all of the members of class two here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna uncomment all these. So first statement here is I'm going to be creating a tester object type T, reference variable, and set that equal to a new reference of a tester object. And then I'm going to be using that new reference variable that we've got through inheritance, right? And I'm going to be setting two number directly equal to two, 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 and then I will be invoking display two number uh, method to display that to the console here. So let's go over this here real quick. Two number is protected. The two number um, display two number method is public, so we'll be able to invoke that no problem. We're just testing this right here. So let's go ahead and make sure that's saved. Come out here, compile it. And let's clear our screen and run it again. So the value of one number equals one, one, one. The value of two number equals two, two, two. Okay, so as you can plainly see, we can inherit class two and we can access class two's two number, the protected, through inheritance, but not through creating a reference to an instance. So coming back up here to my website there. So when the protected access modifier is applied to an instance variable, the following access is granted. Full access is granted to read or change the value of the instance variable from within the same package. We saw that the first go around. In addition, access is granted to read or change the value of the instance variable from subclasses. And we did, uh, tester was a subclass of class two, which was in another package. And we inherited that, so through inheritance only. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that off site there. I'm gonna close out of this, close out of that, get rid of this. Leave you with the uh, final thoughts there. So private instance variables are widely considered to be the norm, and I did mean to say private. So there are there may be occasions to use a protected access instance variables as long as, long as you are fully aware of the ramifications of doing so. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.